Alexis Joy from Alexis Joy VIP Access. I am so excited to be chatting with you today. How are you? Hi, Alexis. Very happy to be here. I'm excited too. I'm very good. Sun is back in Paris. It's been uh, quite a while. And uh, that's it. Yeah, it's going to be a beautiful day. So uh, for me, it's uh, kind of late, but I think for you, it's the morning. Yeah. So good morning. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, happy. So oh, yeah, Ted Lasso is starting pretty soon in uh, in one week. So I just cannot wait to watch it and uh, to see the reaction of the fans. That's it. Words cannot even begin to describe how excited we all are. And again, first off, congratulations to you on all of the incredible success with your career. And of course, Ted Lasso. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, Ted Lasso is uh, by far my, my biggest success. and. Uh, uh, the stuff I'm the most proud about. So yeah, uh, congratulations to everyone who has been on the show, all the actors, all the directors, uh, everyone was set a foot on the on the on the place or walking the project. So it's like a, a real team team spirit we have. Absolutely, and I love that you guys have truly made a family. So we have a lot to talk about now. Season two is coming up. July twenty third is the big day. So can you tell us what it was like for you working on this new season? Oh, what was it like? Uh, first, we felt extremely um, lucky and happy to be able to work in the pandemic. I think Apple have done a great job and the production uh, to make it uh, to make it happen um, about the second season. So we had uh, maybe a lot of pressure, but because the first season was a big success. But, you know, with a team like this, with Jason, with everyone, it's uh, the pressure. There's not much of a pressure, like just keep doing what we are doing, stay professional and that's it. Uh, and this second season was a little awkward. We had to follow extremely strict procedures about COVID regulations, staying home, be careful, not getting the COVID because it would have been a disaster on set uh, to have like a um, um, COVID pandemic in our own little production uh, compared to England. And um, so, yeah, we have been careful. We have done what we had to do. And that's it. Yeah, it was a little weird, but we went through it. Amazing. Now, there is just simply one word to describe what you all have created with this show, and it's a masterpiece. So we know that season two will just be absolutely brilliant, and we can't wait for it. Now, is there a moment that sticks out to you the most from working on season two? Uh, without any spoiler, it's kind of hard. <laughs> um, okay, maybe I can say this one because it has been on the trailer that uh, when Ted Lasso is changing to to another character, super dark and being nasty at everyone. So this was very nice uh, to see uh, to see Jason expressing uh, Ted Lasso in a different way. Uh, but like uh, like everything, I think um, uh, Ted Lasso season two, they have created a lot of new things to change, uh, to keep the Lasso away, but to make it different, to, to not make it repetitive. So for me, there were some special episodes, I think the four, uh, so you see on the trailer to the, the Christmas episode. So I just kind of try to see it. It's, I think it's very poetic and uh, more, much more um, football scenes, uh, new teams, uh, new directors, new set strategy. So uh, lots of new thing in this second season. And I think the writer have uh, really had to, to work hard to not make it repetitive, new and still keeping the, the core of Ted Lasso. Amazing. I cannot even tell you. I was already excited, but just from your answer alone, I'm even more thrilled to see this new season. There's going to be so many surprises, so I cannot wait. Now, as I just said, as so many fans have expressed on social media, we all have been literally counting down the days for the premiere. So what are you most excited for, for fans to see in this new season? Oh, well, I think uh, just... Um... The first season was quite focused on, on Ted Lasso and this character need to bind bonds with the viewers and it takes time. Okay, he's, he's a nice guy and uh, he's not dumb, but, but it takes time to understand Ted Lasso and what he's trying to do and to get on with the, with the character it can take two, three, four, five, six episodes. And at the end of the, of the first season, everyone okay, truly understand what is he doing and uh, what uh, what the character has been through. So this is done. Now, on season two, we cannot, I think, um, the, the, the scriptwriters had to find a different strategy to entertain people and still keeping the energy of Ted Lasso and uh, the character and, and still keeping a, um, a very strong 
uh, link with the um, with the fans and new stuff creating with all the different characters with the team is trying to find new topics and there is new drama coming in uh, very strong drama and uh, yes so the Ted Lasso is expressing I think a little more on season two for everything that can be around the character of Ted Lasso and maybe a little less focus on it so they have done this job well I think they have done this I'm, I'm not uh, I'm not a, a criticized expert on analysis of, of things like th like this, but yeah, it's gonna be a great stuff, and um, new things are gonna appear in season two, and uh, the fans, I think they're gonna be wow, there's everything behind Ted Lasso, behind this team, behind football, and uh, yes. Voila. <laughs> that is so awesome. Season two is just going to be absolutely mind blowing. So I cannot wait for it. Now, just to emphasize even more the impact that Ted Lasso has made is that you guys were actually picked up for a third season before you even began production on season two. So if you could see anything happen to your character in season three, what would you like it to be? Me? <laughs> oh, my character, Richard Molo, I think, um, is a funny character. And uh, luckily for me, there are some uh, French speakers in the scriptwriters because I think it's kind of difficult. Okay, there is this French guy. Uh, he needs to, to, uh, to do some punchline here and there. But if we don't speak French, it's kind of difficult to, to put him in. And uh, yeah, the, the scriptwriter and the production, uh, they are very nice with me. They give, they give me some time and space to express or to propose and say, ah, maybe Stefan, can you do? I think uh, the character can do that. And I propose stuff and they say yes, no, or we record it. And then I don't know what they're going to do with the edit. So my character as far is uh, um, evolution, I think um, is just nice the way he is um, in the team in the core uh, I think he's a good football player uh, making the team uh, playing in the, um, in the middle I like Verratti a little um, he's stubborn and uh, what's funny about him is that he's a little like Ted Lasso he doesn't want to learn English that much he's not making a lot of effort so he's just understanding the basics but uh, apart from a left right and some sentence he managed to pick up and uh, something he can get from uh, the others. He'll, he'll never make an effort to express stuff in, in English, except if he really needs to, to make himself understand. And his accent will always be a little more like this, and I don't think he's going to make any effort uh, to practice English and still going to stay very much French deep inside, like if the others are going to have beer, I think he's going to request for wine, and uh, he's missing cheese, and he's missing his goat and his farm, and uh, my characters just gonna uh, create it uh, the way they feel it if they were space and uh, I'll be surprised myself with any ideas they would have. Absolutely <laughs> that is so amazing and just all of the different qualities about your character is what makes him so special and so enjoyable to watch so we love it and you do an incredible job bringing him to life of course. Now we all could learn a lot from Ted Lasso and he's optimistic, he's an amazing coach. So what do you think are some qualities that make a great coach like Ted Lasso? Uh, listening. It's not quite easy sometimes. Is the, I think it's the archetype of, uh, the archetype of the opposite of what uh, a coach should be. You don't have time to listen to 21 players. You don't have time to listen to the fans. You don't have time to listen to the journalists. Let me do my job. I get paid for it. I don't have time. We have to win. So everyone shut up. You can watch and don't criticize. And Ted Lasso is doing the exact opposite <laughs> of what all the others are doing. I think you should do more like this. Okay, why? That's interesting. Why do you think this? Do you imagine like everyone having his own point of view on building a team, making strategies? It's so complicated. But uh, Ted Lasso, I think, just has got an amazing good star and a good karma. So everyone who's going to give him ideas or suggestions, it's just going to be good because it's attracting them. And uh, that's how Ted Lasso is walking and the magic of it. And when the, your intentions are good, your, your karma is good, the good ideas are just keep, um, keep coming to you. And that's the Lasso way, what he's trying to express. That's it. That is so amazing. I absolutely love that. Now, 
For a fun question. So if you were a coach of your own and you can create a team with two other people, it can be absolutely anyone. It can be friends, celebrities, athletes, anyone. If you could pick two other people, who would be on your team? And what would you name your sports team? I would like to get the, the old uh, Thierry Henry when he was playing for Arsenal. This one would be great. And I think I would love to have also Barthez because well, when he was great. So we need a very good goalkeeper and we need uh, an extremely good uh, number nine to win anything. Uh, now the name of the team, the Black Foxes. I think I like that. Ooh, very fancy. <laughs> Love it. And then, of course, we have the fantastic coach, which is yourself. So that would be like a dream team, right? <laughs> okay. And for uh, the most important question would be, who, who would be my side coaches? So uh, Ted Lasso would be great. And to take the exact opposite, maybe Mourinho or some Paoli, someone with an extremely strong character to make the balance. And I'm going to be in between uh, the extremely nice guys and the bad guy. Yeah. So that could be a good idea. Perfect balance, right? Yeah, yeah. Be fun. Love it. Now, one of the many things we all love is just seeing the camaraderie you all have with each other. And again, the family you guys have created. So what has it been like working with Jason Sudeikis, with all of your incredible cast members, and just, again, making such a wonderful Lasso family? Well, um, it's been quite surprising at first. Uh, for me, as I said, it's my first big big project and uh, I've done a lot before and uh, sometimes it's not that good like you don't have to be extremely friendly or family you can everyone respect each other but we all have different uh, lifestyle or point of view or arguments or, or things like this it has been quite surprising that everyone loves each other on, in us in this show I'm not saying this because of blah 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 this it's it's just the truth uh, from uh, the leads from the extras from the median actor like me the boys the girl the old the young everyone is extremely respectful Jason first hello jason hello stefan how are you doing i'm great have a good day you don't need to say more you don't need to lose to waste time you have to do your job when you have a question brendan what do you think i think more like this. oh okay jason oh they always have time for everyone uh to to give uh personal directions if you don't have anything to ask, you just don't ask. You do your stuff, and at the end, we are on time. Everyone is extremely happy. The result is here, 20 Emmys, and uh, there's nothing more that can be added to this uh, amazing group. So now we're extremely close. Uh, we all have um, a WhatsApp group. We call each other. I just, I just had a call before you with uh, Nate <laughs> Scotch, one of the um, one of the actors of Ted Lasso, and uh, yeah, we give call to each other, and uh, we love each other as much outside uh, and uh, inside the production, and uh, that's great. We'll try. If it keeps going on, we'll be just perfect. And I think we've been lucky, um, surprised because it's not always like this. We we have to be honest. But yeah, it's just, just perfect. So I hope it's going to keep going. Yeah, yeah. Well, we all hope that as well. And that's so amazing. That's a big part of making the masterpiece of a show that you guys created is how much love you all have for each other on and off set. So that's incredible. Now, I want to take actually a quick detour because some fans might not know this about you, that in addition to being a terrific actor, you're also a composer. So tell us how you got started with that. Okay, um, quickly, I started music when I was five. My mom pushed me to it, five or seven, eight, I forgot. And uh, I said, no, I didn't want solfege. I think it's super boring, but I've done it anyway. I started on I started on a, as a clarinetist, then uh, saxophone, and around 18, uh, I started um, piano. So I'm not extremely good, but I have very good time and fun uh, playing music, that's it. In 2016, uh, I had an opportunity with a producer. Um, he knew I was doing music and he said, OK, I'm going to do this uh, documentaries for Fast and Furious 8, uh, the international documentary uh, called Quand les coureurs font la loi. OK, it's a French stuff that has been translated. So he went to America to do this and he said, OK, Stefan, I'm going to be out for, for a month or two. And when I'm back, if you want, um, tried to do some music, but I had no idea how to compose. And a friend of mine named, uh, named Quentin, an extremely good friend of mine, we create our own little production, and he knew how this was working. So you just 
basically. You take a keyboard, you plug it to your to your MacBook, and you say, I want basson, I want strings, I want chorus, I want uh, whatever you want, and you just compose like this. And we compose like five music to this producer for Fast and Furious 8. And he said, well, I love it. It's great. So little concerto, little electronic music, and some big orchestral stuff. And since then, I just love keep on doing it. And uh, actually, this morning, I just finished uh, um, a project for a Switzerland movie, future film. So it's done. Now it's getting mixed and mastering. And I'm done with this one. Very happy. So acting is my first, first love. And I, I will always do this. And But whenever I have time, any musical project is extremely interesting. And I really love to compose with my friend. And voila. That is incredible. You're someone who can simply do it all from acting to composing. You do such a phenomenal job. So congratulations on finishing that project earlier this morning. So exciting. Now we're going to do a very quick speed round. So sure. the first one is, who is a dream actor you'd love to have guest star on Ted Lasso? Oh, uh, okay. Maybe Cantona. Ooh, very cool. Eric would be fun. He's a funny guy. He's done some movies. He's French, and he's a he's a super symbol. Uh, he's, he's very symbolic figure in football uh, for Manchester United. So so yeah, Cantona would be great. Very cool. And let's imagine you're prepping for a big soccer game. What would be your go-to song to get ready for the game? I go to song. <laughs> uh, uh, good question. Okay, I'm not gonna say Mozart. Hey, <laughs> uh, if that's what you need to get ready, that's what you need to get ready. <laughs> uh, I think one of the songs of Stromae, uh, because I really love them. I still don't know which one I, I'm gonna put. I, I'm gonna put in, but uh, Too Slim maybe. Uh, I really love this one. So it's still very punchy. I respect the guy, and he's going through tough times uh, now. And uh, so yeah, it's gonna give me some force to for the game, I think. Awesome. And last one for the speed round is, what's your favorite sports team? Mm, okay, but PSG, I think. Uh, I'm supporting PSG, I'm French, it's the, it's the strongest team in in Europe right now. We have amazing uh, amazing players. Okay, the team is a little weird and uh, lots of people in, in, in Europe don't like it, especially in France. <laughs> but yeah, PSG is great. It's in Paris, I'm there too. It's a, it's a huge community, and uh, I hope that one day, if I'm still alive, we're going to win the, the Champions League. would be great. <laughs> that would be awesome. Well, you did a terrific job on that speed round. And lastly, <laughs> if you could bring out a message to all of your fans, what message would that be? Well, thank you guys uh, for spending time for Ted Lasso. Thank you for the amazing reviews. That's super heartwarming. Um, thank you for spending some time also to look for my name, who I am, and uh, finding time to write me a little message on Instagram. I really appreciate it from all around the world. And uh, that's what we are doing our job uh, for people to like it and, and recognize it. And if they spend five seconds, one minute, just trying to reach out and uh, just saying thank you for your job and I uh, appreciate the show. That's everything we want and that's all we're looking for. So thank you everyone for doing this. Yay, well, thank you so much for bringing out such a magnificent show to our screens. We're all binge watching it over and over again. And thank you so much for chatting with me today. We all can't wait to see you in season two of Ted Lasso premiering on July 23rd. Thank you so much, Stefan. Thank you so much. So happy I was with you. Thank you. <laughs>